Alrighty, hi there team and welcome to another update on the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Monday, January 6th. It's about noon here mountain time. I'd put it about 9 a.m. over in Hawaii. Thanks for joining me. I had a week or so off. Hope you all had a great New Year's and holiday period uh, over the last week or so. It's been a bit since my last update. I think it was before uh, I think it was the 26th, the day after Christmas, that I did my last update on Kilauea. And since that time, I've been following things from afar while we've been gone. So I wanted to bring you up to speed on what's transpired there over the past, I suppose, week and a half or so, however long it's been since the 26th. So let's go ahead and provide a quick summary. So remember, we had an eruption that began on December 23rd, about 2 a.m., that was the initial phase. This eruption was solely confined to the crater at the summit of the Kilauea uh, caldera or volcano in Hawaii. That eruption began again at 2 a.m. Uh, it lasted about a day or so. By the next day in the afternoon, uh, it pretty much had subsided. And that was our first phase of this eruption. That uh, second phase began the next day on Christmas Eve, December 24th, and lasted until Christmas Day around 11 a.m. So we had that second phase um, that was going on. And then the third phase, which has been the longest, um, most protracted period of these three phases thus far, this one began on the 26th of December, about 8 a.m. local time. And it just shut down recently on January 3rd, about 8.40 p.m., according to the USGS. So that was the longest phase there, lasting about, uh, what is that, like maybe uh, seven, eight days or so, about a week. Um, and these are all coming from vents on the southwest side of the crater. So you can see uh, a live view there. Let's maybe roll it back to where it's a little less uh, gassy, but you can see... Some of the degassing going on from those vents is a little bit obscured here by this USGS camera position, but this is the lava lake at the bottom of the crater. Um, all this rock you're seeing there, you can see a little bit, of, if we go back far enough, there's a little bit of glow there. That's just sort of the residual glow of that uh, little spatter cone there, cooling and crystallizing. But you can see all this lava here on the crater floor is all from this December 23rd, eruption or one of these later events. So the real question is here is are we going to see a fourth eruptive phase from Kilauea? Are we building up towards a fourth phase that might be um, initiated any day now and we'll have to look to see if that's taking place. There's certainly some signs that that might be the most likely outcome. So let's walk you through some of the data here I have for you. There's some great video and photos from the USGS that I want to share as well. Uh, real quick note though, that there's no earthquakes or other evidence that this eruption and that the magma itself is leaving the summit area where it's very confined and a bit of a tourist spectacle. None of that magma appears to be moving into the southwest or the east rift zones, which can be much more problematic because then you're sending lava um, you know, out of the summit region, down the flanks, and potentially into communities. So there's no real hazards associated with this right now, other than maybe some uh, volcanic gases downwind um, and just some localized hazards near the summit area. Um, okay, so let's go through a couple things here. Uh, I went through all the updates since my last update on the 26th from the USGS, so you don't necessarily need to read those yourself. But a couple highlights here from the one that just came out today, Monday, January 6th. Um, so the eruption for this third phase, as we talked about, it, it paused as of uh, 8.40 on Friday, January 3rd, but you can still see glow. It remains, but it's much diminished. So there's still a little bit of glow as that lava continues to degas and cool. Uh, glow could persist for days. No other activity noted in those rift zones like we talked about there. Um, the interesting here with the instruments, and, and we'll get to this here in a second, is there was a, um, a, once the eruption was going on, there was deflationary tilt, but once the eruption f ended, this, this last phase, it switched back to more of an inflationary tilt. So that lets us know that magma is still accumulating in the subsurface, and if it continues to accumulate and that inflationary tilt continues, that's most likely setting the stage for the next eruptive phase there. And you can kind of read that here if you kind of head down to the analysis part of the update where they talk about um, this eruption, like most others, starts with vigorous lava and gas emission, but it is now paused for the third time. Episodes two and three were preceded by reinflation of the summit, the rapid change from deflation to inflation at the onset, 
suggests that another eruptive phase may occur in the coming days to weeks. So again, no, no real way to know what the timetable is on that, um, but that's the, the best we have right now. Um, let me take you to some of the recent videos and such. This is all from, uh, this one is from to yesterday, or no, excuse me, a couple days ago, January 3rd. I guess that would have been uh, Friday, but a nice overflight here from the USGS. So they're looking towards uh, Mount Aloha in the background. And there's that vent there on the southwest side of Kilauea. See the actual extent of the, the crater there. And then the higher rim here for the caldera. So we've got two sort of this smaller craters nested within the caldera. But a nice view of the vent. Here it is sort of from ground level within the crater itself, looking towards that southwest wall where the vent is feeding this lava lake out here. It's mostly solidified, at least at the surface. Um, let's see what else they've got for us here. They've got some great little video clips here, so I want to share those with you. A um, little closer view of that. It is building a bit of a spatter cone. It's not well defined. It's not a, a classic, you know, symmetrical cinder cone, but it does. Uh, it is fountaining lava, so it's building up that tephra and those clots of lava. There you can see it. So it's sort of a bit of a, um, you know, half of a cinder a spatter cone if you will in terms of its real shape and then it, this side here facing the crater floor is a side where the lava flow is all just pouring out and feeding um this big lava lake here at the on the floor of the crater so some really nice uh video footage there another view kind of looking at it from a different angle but you can see the the smooth ropey nature of the lava lake very hot of course it's not glowing because this is you know with this high sun angle, middle part of the day, but this is this would be glowing red, and this was taking place. And again, this is not from today. This is from a few days ago. Uh, here we have one of there. You can see the vent in the background, but here's one of these uh, pahoehoe lobes. What's so fun here? I just paused the video real quick to show you. This is classic pahoehoe behavior at the leading edge of these flows, where you get this thin, flexible skin or this crust, uh, but it's actually inflating from within. So it, this uh, thin, flexible lava crust um, contains the lava within it but it, as more lava is pumped into that tube it actually inflates a little bit you can also see some of the stretched gas bubbles on the, the surface there kind of showing you some of that texture uh, looks like let's go ahead and switch that to really big so there's that lava lobe inflating a little bit you might be able to actually see that little chips of glass sometimes pop off of it over time Good stuff. There's some lava therapy for you. Here's one of their geologists um, collecting a sample. So scooping up some of the lava, putting it in the bucket with the water uh, to quench it, and then they'll take that back for analyses. Um, and they'll probably get those results out probably in the next couple of days or so. So pretty cool. Good stuff there. So that's some of the video there. Um, some of the photos, like we can just run through these photos, I guess, kind of quickly. A uh, nice view there of, again, the vent looking, I guess this might be, which way we're looking there, looking to the east, I suppose, um, at that vent on the southwest side, the caldera floor, the crater floor, um, similar to the view where the geologists were collecting the samples, probably the same location, vent in the background, and the leading edge there of this pohoehoe lobe. Um, Outside the, the crater, this is uh, up on the rim. And so this brown material here is all tephra. So this is material that was during the more vigorous fountaining phase was blown up by the release of the, the gases and that energy drifted over the rim of the crater. And USGS scientists were able to collect some of that tephra as well to study. So nice little picture of that. Um, working on one of the monitoring stations there, a nice kind of view. I guess this is at sunrise. Yeah, on the morning of January 3rd, looking at the glow, you can see the gas plume there coming out. This is from Volcano House, which is on sort of the northeast side of the Kilauea caldera. Um, there's one of the parking lots, so it gives you a little bit of sense of scale, and then the, the drop down there off the caldera rim, the overlook sites there. And then another view. This is kind of fun here because it's uh, three volcanoes in one. Let's maybe blow that one up because it's kind of fun to look at. Uh, we got Kilauea here in the foreground, the lava lake. We've got the flank of Mount Aloha there, a bigger shield volcano. Um, and then in the far distance is Mount Akea, uh, which is an older shield volcano. <coughs> Excuse me. So some nice images there from the USGS. Um, 
these I think are all the same ones we just looked at there. Uh, and I think this was the same video we looked at too. Yeah, this was the compilation video. So let's go ahead and look at, uh, to wind this down a little bit, let's look at some of the monitoring data. Uh, and it might make sense to look at the past week or so. So here's, or excuse me, this is the past month. So this is the past month going from uh, early December all the way to today, early January. So this is the, the lava lake or the crater floor elevation. So you can see it's pretty consistent because there was no activity there. And then boom, there's the bump there from the, the uh, eruption on December 23rd. You can see another bump there. And then the crater floor actually rising kind of falls a little bit too. But as more lava was pumped to the surface during those three eruptive phases, the crater floor actually rose in elevation. Some of the down drops here in elevation are probably due to these two here, I think, were due to drain back. At the end of those phases, some of the lava in the lava lake actually drained back down into the primary vents. And so that would that decreased the elevation of the crater floor. Uh, these ones here. I don't think they had drain back on this third phase. This might be related more to as more gases are outgassed from the lava, that decreases its volume, and so it will tend to subside a little bit. So that's why you might be seeing a little bit of the drop there. But nonetheless, a total net gain uh, in elevation of the crater floor from this eruption that began 23rd. Looking at the seismic data over the last month, you can see here's the, the Kilauea crater region, east rift zone coming off here. Uh, the blue quakes are the Pahala deep-seated quakes, not really related to the volcanic activity. These quakes here out on the south flank are related more to the volcano just slowly uh, sliding uh, towards the sea. This is the Kauai fault system here. But again, you can see most of those quakes over the past month confined to the summit region. Um, this is by latitude, or excuse me, longitude. So that shows where most of those quakes are in the summit area. Then looking at them by time, you can see the quakes in December, um, kind of up and down, you know, 60 quakes or so down to less than 20. But then they really started to ramp up around the middle part of December, dropped a little bit, but then they really spiked here with the eruption on and around the 23rd of December. Since that time, they've dropped down considerably. So you can see in the weeks that have followed that December 23rd eruption, seismicity has been low, down around uh, less than 20 to maybe 40 or so quakes per day. Um, pretty consistent with what we'd expect from a system that already has a vent, uh, already has a conduit that's been established to the surface. Usually the big earthquake activity precedes that first eruption. Uh, and then it drops back down a little bit. This you, And then you can see the drop off here again in time wise. So here's this little flurry of earthquakes here. Uh, this big spike of earthquakes corresponds to this time frame here. And then since the 23rd of December, you can see the quakes have dropped off for the most part. Uh, still happening, but not nearly to the frequency and rate we saw in this area here. And there's those Pahala quakes, those deeper quakes that are over here in this part of the island just kind of chugging along um, and in a, in a not necessarily related. But if we look at this all by week, you'll see a similar thing. Uh, the crater floor not doing much except maybe a little bit of subsidence here. If you look at that 940 line right there, 940 meter elevation line, you can see that the around the first and second or so of January, the it was up past that, but then since then, it's dropped down a little bit below that. And that's probably, again, just degassing volume loss from that lava lake or that lava crater floor um, as it loses gas. You know, a, a good, a lot of times in these early eruptions, a good 30, 40, 50%, I think, of the lava's volume is actually gas. So when you lose that gas, you lose some of the volume and therefore the elevation. But yeah, just a big drop in seismicity. So this past week, not a lot going on in the summit area. Um, just sort of business as usual around Kilauea. Again, contrasting this with what we saw over the month, a, a big drop in seismicity overall. Um, instead of looking at, you know, upwards of 100 or so earthquakes per day, we're looking at, again, like less than 50 to as few as 10. So this goes from the December 31st up to today. Uh, low count for today because we are only partway through the day. Um, looking at it by depth, again, pretty similar. These are the earthquakes are mainly pretty shallow, the ones related to the eruption, and not very large in magnitude, twos and lower for the most part. 
Um, and then here's our inflation, deflation inflation signal. So you can see this tilt meter showing deflation as the eruption was taking place. Remember that third phase of the eruption ended on January 3rd at about 8.40 p.m., which would be right there. So there's the eruption ending. And since the eruption ended, this third phase, what you're seeing there is a slight uptick in the inflation signal. So the whole caldera is, again, it was tilting in towards the caldera while the eruption was happening. It was losing magma from the subsurface. But now that the eruption's ended, it's starting to tilt away from, this is a positive tilt, so it's tilting away from uh, that magma system or the crater. And so we're seeing an inflation signal here. That now it's sort of flatlined here over the last little bit. We'll have to see in the next coming days if that picks back up. If it picks back up, that's very likely related to um, magma accumulating and setting the stage for uh, another eruption. So that's all I have for you for today. Uh, as a quick side note, I did do a very short radio interview with, uh, I think, a radio station in the San Francisco area on Christmas Eve about the eruption, which began on December 23rd. If you want to listen to that, I'll make sure I put it a link to it in the video description so you can check that out. It's maybe four or five minutes at most. They just asked me some questions about Kilauea and uh, hazards there and what kind of eruption was taking place. So anyway, uh, good fun stuff. Thanks for your support of the channel. Um, and thank you for watching this update. I'll be sure to put together another one on Kilauea as this uh, situation evolves. Thanks again. Hope you're well and take care.